on and Argot's weakness with the tier pre-6. Thing is, we were thinking about the pick and ban phase, and the only way Fnatic would come out ahead here is if they try and trade power picks back with SK Telecom. One of those power picks that we were going to force, that Fnatic was going to force SKT to pick, would be the Urgot. So at this point, it's just SK Telecom trying to keep their options open with their banning phase and trying to get rid of the things they'd be afraid of actually either being forced to first pick or give up on the other side. See, to me, it looks like SKT is setting up for a possible first pick Rek'Sai right here with mm. the Urgot LeBlanc already gone Possibly Rumble as well, depending on yeah. uh, what Fnatic bans here in the last place. It will be Rek'Sai, so probably going to be Rumble uh, first okay. pick. Finally, six games in a row, we saw Bengi on Rek'Sai going all the way back. Ah, okay. But the Lulu is available. That has been a huge pickup. Are we going to maybe see SKT run that dreaded Juggermaw? Well, they probably won't run the Juggermaw. They've been liking the Sivir more, so I think if you play if you play around SKT, because when they don't go for this Ultra Tank, they default to Faker playing Lulu in the mid lane, and they play a mid-game pick composition with Sivir and Lulu speed to catch people unawares. They'll probably play Maokai with this, I would assume. Yep. Um, and Ma and Maokai for Marin is like one of the scariest champs in League of Legends right now. I believe he's still, he was like 13 he's and 13 one in Korea, and one. coming into this tournament, hasn't gotten to play it yet. Yeah, and the picks could just line up for SKT down the board. Oh, Fnatic yeah. should kind of see this coming in a sense, and SK Telecom knows who they're playing against. They know that Fnatic needs to snowball the mid game early. They're potentially even preventing SK Telecom from getting this, and steal back. Sivir is by far his best champion to play in games like this. He's not going to crush you with mechanics in laning phase. Sivir's a champion who can shove up lanes, be effective in team fights just with the move speed from the ultimate, and have success that way. Those are two very smart picks there by Fnatic. Hmm. So probably with this composition, with the Sivir takeaway, when this happened before in the match versus uh, CJ, what SKT did was they played Lucian, and they may play Nunu here just to buff up Lucian in the late game. But this composition is going to be all about Faker pushing in early on this Lulu in the mid lane and playing a very harass centric style, playing for picks around the, uh, the Dragon, and then trying to get Bang to, as much as he can, hard carry if they go to the late game. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. We'll see what they pick up. Still thinking about it. Spending a lot of time on this, actually. Obviously, Bengi would do just fine on that Nunu. Time is ticking down, though. There's Solution. And what's the second pick going to be? Nar. Okay, well, Marin certainly looking forward to Oh, switching over to Rumble. Okay. That's actually pretty important right there. If we look at when people target Ban Huni in most games, it's Rumble Hecarim that they get rid of him. We didn't see a Rumble Ban here. So taking that away and then forcing Huni onto something else uh, is actually pretty solid there from SKT. Fnatic will need to make sure they're keeping their dragon fight strong and their mid-game powerful with these picks. Vladimir is what he normally goes to in the top lane, but it might not have time to ramp up because SKT will control the bottom side, and who needs to have an impact on that part of the map long before he'd be ready to? Yeah, I mean, you're really looking at level 12, 11 before Vladimir really starts getting rolling when he starts getting in some points in his E in those team fights, so... I think that would be a pretty problematic pick right here. Well, against a team like SK Telecom, you're just not going to survive long enough to get that. Maybe the Cassiopeia pick, though. It is a flex pick now that we know for Fnatic. Yeah, Huni did play that once before in the top lane yesterday. However, Fabivin's Cassiopeia was quite poor when, he saw, when we saw him try and play it earlier in this tournament. Hmm. So I suppose it makes it a little bit more obvious, but hey, could still go mid. I, I think there's a decent chance it goes either way. If it's a top lane Cassiopeia for Fnatic, it is extremely risky depending on the jungle pick from SKT because top lane Cassiopeia is very vulnerable to jungle pressure, which is not something Fnatic faced against TSM. So I actually do really like having Cassiopeia as the fourth pick there with the intention of flexing it for their last choice. It gives them a high amount of damage. SKT, let's see how they finish this one up. They well, have to pick their jungler here. We saw that pretty incredible game from Wolf on Alistar yesterday, of course, against TSM. And it looks like it will probably be that Nunu for Bengi. Not too surprising for SK Telecom, but again, a really scary composition. Well, it's another one of these things from SK Telecom where the, the impact from Faker is mainly just about the vision control and the drag control. SKT will try and take control of the Dragon side river, the scuttle crab, everything around that spot, and their damage isn't overwhelming. But what they'll do here, and we have seen a lot of ganks from Beggy in the past, and obviously the threat of Huni getting really big on a less gank-oriented jungler like Nunu is uh, is pretty is pretty severe. But 
in this case, they have bullies in the bottom and in the mid lane. If that Cassiopeia is going there, we'll see what the last pick is. But if they can just shove it up, Nunu will just solo Dragon by himself. And there won't be the fights, but they're still going to try and wrap up that objective pretty early. So that final pick for Fnatic. And uh, it's going to tell us a lot, too. It's going to tell us what, where that Cassiopeia is going to be. It's going to tell us maybe what the plan of Fnatic is going to shake, shape up to be. Fnatic already has a lot of crowd control uh, and initiation right there from the Sejuani mm -hmm. as well as the Nautilus. So they're, they're free to do a lot of things here. Maybe the Gnar. Yep, it will be. Okay, so Gnar going to be going to the top lane for Fnatic. Unless it's a mid Gnar. Maybe they'll send Caspi <laughs> up there anyway. No, probably not. There we go. It's Europe. So. You never know where Gnar is going. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, actually. Could be the jungle. <laughs> We've seen that before from Kikis. All top right, lane so. Sejuani, why not? Yeah, looking at this, it's, it's actually. It's going to be an extremely mid-game focused game overall. And Fnatic has been losing these games before the mid-game. If they don't lose within the first five minutes, <laughs> then we're going to start seeing some dragon fights for this one, because that's that's Fnatic's option here. Huni, I wonder if he's going to go early home guard boots or something to try and keep up with the dragon fighting here. Yeah, the, the scaling, though, for Fnatic is pretty darn good in this situation. Yep. But the last time SKT played a composition with mid Lulu, when we saw them go up against CJ, Bang had that standout game on Lucian to actually pretty much hard carry them through, even against a very good late game composition from CJ. That's right. So as we get ready, guys, our fans getting psyched. SK Telecom versus Fnatic, of course. And again, SKT, nobody can take dragons against these guys. Will Fnatic get the first one? The coach is shaking hands, and we are about to move on to Summoner's Rift. Remember, tweet at LOL Esports, guys, with the hashtags SKT win or FNC win to let us know who you think is going to come out on top in this game. In the meantime, though, it is time, guys. Our fourth game of the day, SK Telecom versus Fnatic. It's time to get in the game. Yeah, and we've seen some pretty overwhelming victories by SKT thus far in the group stage. 3-0 right now, but they actually do need to contain, continue winning if they want to lock down that number one seed. They have to go 5-0 pretty much with the way AHQ has been performing. Yeah. And Fnatic has looked pretty atrocious since that TSM game, so this is something that they would like for some confidence to at least not get crushed. Well, here we go. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Fnatic, it's been a rough tournament for them so far, but a win over SK Telecom, you know, would do them quite well and would be a huge moral victory for the whole EU scene. SK Telecom, though, coming into today perfect after their 3-0 yesterday, and uh, we'll see if they show any signs of slowing down. I'm kind of doubting it, but who knows? Well, not only perfect in terms of game score, but perfect in terms of Dragons, perfect in terms of Baron. Doesn't really get too much more perfect than that, does it? No, not over the course of several games. Yeah. So, uh... well, words going down for both sides here. Looks like a little bit of an advantage for, for a Fnatic wanting to get these really deep wards in. Yeah, Fnatic is trying to get the brute force lane swap wards, which honestly, in my opinion, is a, an older strategy. They mm -hmm. blind invade, they didn't ward their backside, they were spotted coming in. So this gives SKT all of the flexibility. Luckily, Fnatic did leave one retreat ward in the mid lane, so that has actually tipped them off at least a little bit to where SKT could be going. Yeah, Marin's still seeing the top side as well. So will we see that lane swap coming in? Or steal back in those 2v2s along with Yellow Star. It's been a little bit shaky so far this tournament. It's been a bit tough. Yeah, at least at this point in the lane swap, because they did get spotted by the Rumble in particular coming in, they know at least the starting position of the Rumble. So if SKT wanted to put their bottom lane anywhere but bottom, uh, Fnatic would know about it. There's just no logical reason at this point for SKT to do that, because they do want their bottom lane and their strength down this way. All right, so we'll be Gromp start over here for Steelback and Yellow Star getting that experience. Meanwhile, SKT running the same start that we saw them run against TSM, starting at that red buff with the leash and then walking into lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when they did that against TSM, it allowed Bengi to quickly rush level three and run top lane for a gank because Darius was playing extremely aggressively. Huni is also known for extreme aggression early on in the game, but it's a much different change up here where they're actually going for some counter drop. Yeah, very interesting. Switching it over to the blue buff instead so going buff to buff right there considering that he does have that timer considering a lot of action early on in this bot lane yellow star taking a ton of damage well, they yeah. do get that little bit quicker level two though they're still positioning here wolf and bang finally oh. hitting level two there as well nice trade though on the bang 
I can't believe that SKT actually Whoa. hit level 2 at the same time that Fnatic did. They were able to push the minions so quickly. How did Fnatic knock through those minions faster with the Gromp experience advantages beyond me? But SKT gets out of that lane with an edge, burning the flash off of Nautilus. Yeah, Yellow Star having to flash to get out of that one already. A rough 2v2 for Fnatic. So Rainover is looking for a gank right here. He's thinking that Bengi's coming topside when Bengi's just counter jungling right now. So he's completely changed his tactic up from the last game. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for Bengi <laughs> at the moment. Not going to find him there. If this game now. is not successful for Rainover, he is worlds behind in the jungle match. He's going to try it out. Coming in, there's a flash for the knockup. Marin flashes in response and will get away pretty easily. And now that does set Rainover pretty far behind. Yeah, because his entire blue side of the jungle has been countered. The scuttle crab control is over to Bengi. And unless someone on Fnatic can see that this has happened, remember, there's no knowledge for Rainover. Rainover needs to take a chance here, and it would have to be a blind invade in the blue buff to catch up, but he is still wow. just roaming around the river. And this is SKT's game. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about earlier. We've had a lot of conversations. What happens if Bengi doesn't get this rec side? Because he's been playing to the lanes, playing to the gank so hard. And one thing about Bengi is his playstyle alters drastically when he plays plays this Nunu. Right. And you can see entirely different strategy. Same camp start, but very, very different outcome than TSM. And it's completely fooled Rainover. Yeah, look at that. At four minutes, a little past, the first Dragon is going to go to SK Telecom. And again, still perfect in Dragons. Bengi doing his best Tom impression, going in and taking that one early. And that's exactly right. They have the bot pressure, they have the mid pressure, straight into the dragon. They're going to be able to give Faker this first blue buff on their side. I'm sure that's probably where Bengi's going to head off to next once he recalls something that SK Telecom likes to do. Everybody likes to recall Monte Cristo. You can go back and buy <laughs> items when you do that. It's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the fact that Fnatic started this game with Grump, whereas SKT gave an enhanced pull to their jungler and is still getting more than doubled in CS That's is insane. pretty indicative of why Fnatic is outclassed in this matchup. They cannot lane 2v2 against Bang and Wolf. And even when they did lane 2v2, they completely forfeited that entire side of their jungle. Bengi invaded it, counter-jungled pretty much everything, left a small wolf, so Rainover's still denied an experience. Yeah. And it might just go from bad to worse here. And honestly, Rainover right there could have checked the blue buff just to make sure that's what was going on, because he had no indication of where Bengi was. Could have poked into the jungle, Oops. went for the crab instead. Now Bengi. Well, Snowball fights in the jungle. Rainover gonna chase Bengi back. As soon he comes down, he's gonna be Meganar right away. Misses that Q though. Marin backing away, getting a bit of position. There's a knock up onto Bengi. Rainover still chasing. Fnatic getting a little bit low together though. But this 2v2 could go either way. SKT doesn't feel confident enough. They're backing off right now. Marin turns around for a parting shot onto Huni. Meanwhile, Fnatic ate a lot of damage from the overheated flame spitting rumble from Marin right there. Yeah. Even without his flash, he was able to posture enough threat to prevent the chase through from Fnatic. It, really nice gank avoidance there by Marin. Yeah, Huni also missing skill shots. Doesn't bit. help. That's pretty important. Yeah, well, Bengi's just going to start that blue buff. We'll see if Faker comes by to grab that one. Doesn't look like he really has the opportunity now. We'll see if he heads up. Looks like Bengi might just take this one. He's a hungry Yeti. He's going to wait. Nope, wait. Oh. nope, he got it. <laughs> Too slow. consume, he will wait. <laughs> Sorry, Faker. Bengi waits for no man. Not even Faker. Meanwhile, Faker has plenty of mana anyway. Still doing just fine in that mid lane. And why not do a bit more counter jungling? Get another ward or two down. So one unfortunate thing in this game for Fnatic is because Rainover was counter jungled early by Nunu. Uh, normally, even though Nunu and Sejuani are both tank junglers. Sejuani at least has a bit better ganking presence early. Uh, Nunu doesn't obviously have the move block in order to do so. And with Faker pushed up so heavily, he would be a prime target for rain over gank, but he oh boy. to do so. Oh boy. coming Boonie's in. He's trying to do there's it. There's Meganar. There's the ult. Faker will go ahead and try to survive here. Is he going to be able to do it? Getting really low. No. First blood goes over to Femvin in the mid lane. Nice gank on the Faker. That's been one of Faker's faults this tournament. We sure saw it against uh, Bashiktash as well, where he plays very aggressively, has missed some of these roams, not only the lane swap, but a very clever mid lane or roam by the top laner Huni and Marin. Not really calling that one out. It's actually the second time Huni's roamed down there. 
because of the early gank from Rainover, burning the flash has given Huni some freedom to do so. And Monty, this time it was just one person coming for Faker, not the whole team. So <laughs> yeah. Fnatic doesn't actually lose that much from this. No. As far as the first eight minutes of a Fnatic game, since the TSM match against AHQ or against EDG, this is the best Fnatic has been off. True enough. I mean, the thing is, is we're actually starting to see Faker uh, give up a lot of first bloods in the mid lane late. We saw a little bit in Korea too, but it hasn't really slowed them down too much. Either way, it's going to give Febivin a nice little boost here in lane. Just picking up a lot of MR so far. Oh, Bengi coming in from behind him, though. Faker with that whimsy, they're going to slow him down a little bit with the snowball as well. Febivin turns, and I don't think they're going to do quite enough damage there. Even Faker with that ignite. It's like he doesn't know he can change summoner spells away. It's like it always has to be Ignite Flash, no matter what. Lulu, Ignite Flash. Well, coming into this one, too, in that gank, Faker decided not to use either of his summoners. Pretty much just yeah. saying he was dead. And then they got a summoner in response. So it's going to be about whether SK Telecom can actually follow up on the summoners that they've managed to get out of Fabivan because kill pressure... Definitely over to Faker right now. The chance that they're going to have to follow up will obviously be this dragon number two. They got it so early on. Fnatic only has a rough idea of when it will have gone down, and they will not have the Cassiopeia flash in these difficult corridors. With both top laners thinking of coming in right here, having your summoner spells for that dragon fight is arguably more important than making a gank more difficult, because Faker was probably dead either way in that mid lane. Oh, yeah. And Febivent had to flash for his life uh, because he could actually escape the gank. But now SKT can try and use that in the dragon number two fight. Totally true. It is going to be really nice to have that flash and ignite for this next dragon that's up in about a minute. Looks like Febinim. Oh, oh, he oh, took no. the blue. Rain over. Ooh. Oh, well, that's a little bit of a problem. And that's very important because they could have had blue buff advantage right there. Yeah. SKT's blue coming up a little bit later. And with the way that Faker is continually shoving Febivin back into the turret right there, it is going to run his mana down to half before this potentially apocalyptic fight here at Dragon. Apocalyptic, wow. <laughs> I, I was trying to think of a big word. I think I reached a little too far. <laughs> Ragnarok-esque fight. That's right. Oh, Wolf. Might be the end times for him if he's not careful here. Pulverize gets stunned by Yellow Star. He's going to just kind of guard in that very disturbing skin that he's using. Cowboy Alistar, I don't know. That thing still gives me the creeps. <laughs> it's weird. So, Pink Ward Control. Going over a little bit to SKT right now. Still, Yellowstar gets in, eliminates one of his own. Febivin going to go back two seconds before Dragon spawn. Yeah, that might be a little bit rough. We'll see if SK Telecom reacts. There's Bang trying to push Steel back out of lane. He does a decent amount of damage with the calling, with just auto attacks after that dash. Oh, Steel back push way out. Bang taking a little bit of chuckle damage, but not as much of a worry with that Alistar as your lane partner. Meanwhile, Bangi starting to zone a bit. SK Telecom, we'll see if they can get a hold of this Dragon. All, Ooh, the setup in the, all the setup in the world, if your AD carry gets chunked out like that before a dragon fight, you're not thinking of contesting. So now yeah. SKT might be trying to do a bait and switch out up here hmm. and maybe just catch him out because they know that since the Sivir is so low, that even if they commit a Lulu to the top lane, it's a free roam right there. Uh, missed opportunity because Huni obviously went back. Right. Huni also in that Mega Nar, not the best time to gank a top lane Nar. Oh, rain over. Chasing Bengi didn't quite get the little knockup. And Bengi will just hide out on his opponent's ward. Not the best place to hide. Yeah, so a little bit of a delay here. Yeah. As Fnatic buys themselves, an, buys themselves enough time just to hold on to some level of river control for a little bit. Steelback slowly healing back up. And here oh, we go, Bengi with the snowball. Yep, coming in trying to protect that ward that they know is seen by that pink ward. Rain over. Both all trying to get away. Here comes Bang. Steelback advancing as well. Still a little bit lower on the health. Here comes a teleport coming in. Bangy getting very low. Uses that all. Absolute zero. Goes off. Yellowstar gets the kill anyway. Wolf in a little bit of trouble. But here comes Faker. Here comes Mara. Rain over coming in. Getting taken down. Meanwhile, another kill though. Comes in. Marin zoning pretty well. And Yellowstar Star back out for the moment. Marin getting really low, and Huni's about to go Meganar. I think SKT has been pushed away from this dragon. Ooh. This one might go to Fnatic. Marin might go down. Huni grabs the kill. What a play. And Bang and Faker have to retreat under the turret. Fnatic winning that team fight. And that was a great teleport from Huni right into that one. Uh, there We saw the teleport from Marin as well, but it was a little bit off to the side. And even though we got that equalizer down in the choke point, it was a little too late. So I'll take a look at that. One again. We talked about monsters in the mid lane before this tournament, but it's really been the top laners and their impact with teleport right here because the fight when it starts is initiated by Fnatic, but it's the teleport 
early from Mooney right there to have the bigger impact. When Marin came in with the Rumble, the Equalizer is actually not that effective because the rest of Fnatic is able to move through it right there. It didn't block their pathway pretty much at all. And then the rest of this fight was just Hooney hanging on with the low amount of health in order to get this kill on a Marin. Yeah, also Fabivin was just chasing Marin right there, landing a ton of ease before he could even get into that team fight. So he showed up without a lot of HP. Wow. And here we go, right back to the Dragon. Fnatic did choose to recall. Yep, that's right. Bengi lurking close by as well as... So is Wolf right behind the pit. Looks like they might just give this one up, though. It's not the biggest deal, I suppose, if Fnatic takes it. But hey, Fnatic, the first team this tournament to get a Dragon against SK Telecom. How about that? Yeah, well played. Wow. Great not job bad. by Fnatic, especially overcoming this huge disadvantage in the bottom lane. Steel back in Yellow Star. Yeah. Just tracking the gold in this game already. It's already a 900 gold difference between Bang and Steelback. So that will definitely be a problem as this moves on because not only does Bang have the one-on-one -on -one advantage, he will also get the added support of a Nunu and a Lulu. If we're talking about Bang being able to solo carry games, that's almost what he's going to have to end up doing in this game. You know, the, the scaling from Fnatic is still pretty spectacular, so there's actually not that long, and Bang has to really extend this advantage as far as possible. Well, we know Bang is capable of carrying games in the clutch for SK Telecom. That's how uh, SKT managed to get to the finals of Champions just uh, a week ago, a couple weeks ago. So not a big worry there. Well, the difference, though, between that game, you really can't underestimate how important that Dragon for Fnatic was. Because SKT has to accelerate this game towards five Dragons and continue to get that fifth Dragon with a composition like this to make up for their weaker scaling. So that was actually very crucial in the win that they had against CJ. So delaying that for Fnatic is absolutely huge. Front Faker just going to pick up a little bit more CS in lane. But Fnatic, they've got the opportunity that we're looking for. And now, I mean, what do, the, what do you do at this point if you're Fnatic to sort of keep this going? Oh, never mind. A little bit of fight in the top lane. Ward does go, uh, wall, uh, tower does go down later, but Bengi will go down. Whoa. Up top, Fnatic managing to catch him there. Here comes Marin, the yellow star there to protect Rainover. I don't think he's going to be able to pick that one up. No, Marin has to go back and sit under turret. Good run by Yellow Star, but he is leaving Steel back out a bit to dry in that bottom side. He's now behind. Oh, we have to keep CS. going. Whoa! Here comes Rain over back over the wall again. This may not have been wise, but here comes Huni. Martin in a little bit of trouble, and Fnatic gets another one. What is going on? I, I really like Fnatic's adaptation here because they basically just left Steel back there to do what he can, but they're actually trying to make plays where they have the strength on the map right yeah. now, and it's really working out. And Marin has been a big carry force throughout this tournament, and they're starting to shut him down. And Fnatic is playing around Hooney. We were really excited for this Hooney versus Marin matchup. The jungle pressure early was favored towards Hooney. Rainover gave him those early ganks, and both in the dragon fight and that gank there, it's been about Hooney's impact in these things. To answer your earlier question, though, about what Fnatic needs to do, they need to continue to play around Hooney, and they also need to stop Bang from accelerating this game via turret kills. Mm. So any type of turret defense or counter pushes is absolutely crucial for Fnatic. Makes sense. Well, SKT was able to get that first turret of the game down in bot lane right as that uh, gank up at top was happening. But that's about all they've got going for them at the moment. Gold's still pretty even, of course, because of that uh, CS situation between the lanes. In fact, down about way ahead. SKT looking to take their second turret here. Let's see if they let them. One thing Bang or one thing Marin did do in this top side is steal back. Oh boy. Here comes Rain over. Steal back getting roasted by Marin, but now Marin in a little bit of trouble again. Really desperate for that kill. On to steal back. Can't get it. Some desperation creeping into Marin's moves here on the map. Now Bengi caught out in the jungle. This may cost Fnatic their top turret, but either way, it's gonna be another kill maybe for Fnatic. Bengi trying to back away. So close, but it looks like, oh, maybe he'll be able to make it. But here comes Feminine over the wall. A kill for Feminine gets exhausted immediately. Huni hopping to safety, but here comes Faker. A kill for Bang. Wolf knocking Feminine out of the fight for now. They're going to keep chasing. This may be another one. Will it be the double for Faker? Take you a lot of damage, but it will be. Meanwhile, a turret goes down and bot. That is true. Rainover could try to do something. Meanwhile, Marin back in bot lane. The turret's evened up. He tried to get the kill right there with the home guard engaged, but couldn't quite find it even after TPing down into that bottom side. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure lost from SKT after that because we think about that fight that happened. It was a two for two, but at the end of the day, it was a turret defense yep. for Fnatic and a turret take for them in the bottom yeah. lane as well. Fnatic is showing here that they are the most inconsistent team <laughs> at MSI. Because I guess so, yeah. 
because this is what Fnatic can look like when they're at their best sometimes. With Hooney going around and making plays, Rainover is free to gank and be a huge factor. Those two in conjunction with strong play from Febifen, this is the map control and team fighting the Fnatic got the European LCS Championship with. Yeah, and there we go. Turret finally goes down. Marin was able to push up that lane for most of this game, so just a little bit of HP left on that one. I'd love to see the mid lane turret, see how that is going. About 50% right now. Yep. Okay. 50% health on the mid lane turret. And Steelback doing whatever he can to kind of get back into this game gold-wise. Still way behind in CS, but farming in a bit of the jungle. And you can see that SKT is trying to abuse that as much as possible. Every time there's an outer turret, that's the lane that Bang is going for, which should end right. up being a magnet for team fights if you're Fnatic right now, because they are the ones that control the Sejuani and the Nautilus for initiation tools, and they should be attacking SKT wherever SKT goes to try and accelerate this turret game. Well, Faker having to go up to the top lane to save that turret, but it has, like, basically no health remaining. Meanwhile, Fnatic pressuring mid. Bang trying to save it as best he can, for the moment anyway. SK Telecom has a turret lead, but I don't think that's going to last. What is going to be interesting here is in 30 seconds, the next Dragon pops up, and Fnatic already trying to clear out a little bit of vision there. Wolf doesn't like that. And here comes Bengi. Rainover has to retreat over the wall. Looks like they'll clear each other's wards out for now. Still, it's a tough position for SKT. Yeah. Huni has his TP up. Marin does not because he didn't get that kill onto Steelback with it in the bottom side. And now they're going to try and take that turret and delay SKT as long as possible on this dragon and then try and force a fight after. A couple of differences between this dragon and the last one. The deep ward coverage by SKT is extraordinary. And this time they don't have to wait for Marin to teleport in. He can get an instant equalizer. So if Fnatic wanted to fight, they would be late to the party. Oh, well, here we go. SK Telecom able to burst down this dragon and take it. They'll trade their top turret for it. But now they move into the mid lane. Will they maybe be able to take down the final outer turret of Fnatic here? Uh, Rumble's going back to defend tier two. Yep. For now, we do have Huni coming in from behind, too. Well, for the moment. Thinking about it. Nope, back to top lane. He has to recall extremely quickly. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's right. got to get out of here there. But here comes Marin. Can he get out? Flame Spitter. Smart. Okay. That works. Smart in the sense that it saved his life. Yeah. Not smart in the sense it. that he had stuck around that long after the dragon had been forfeited. He was trying to create a little bit of pressure. If he was going to burn the teleport for that rotation, they would have needed something elsewhere, but the minion waves are just not in play. So that was a, a decent sized mistake from Huni, and it eliminates their teleport threat that they would have oh, in the next fight. No recall for Feb, then he's going to need to back off a little bit slower here. Yeah, TP advantage will go over to SK Telecom for a little while once Marins comes back up, which won't be too long in the future here. SK Telecom, though, putting a lot of pressure onto this mid lane. Bang, pushing people away with Ray A lot of damage on the Febvin. Really connected well on that one. Oh, but here comes Rainover over the top. Is Fnatic going to fight this? Might be tough. Bengi comes in. Faker's still full health. With all the damage that Febvin took, I think it's going to be tough to try to turn this into a team fight. Doesn't look like Fnatic wants to. Well, they still have a Sivir here to wave clear, so they managed to scramble enough people into the mid lane that SKT will have a bit of trouble taking this turret. Both teams do appear to be on the same page about what is needed yes. to win this game right yeah, here. SKT definitely. continually moving towards this mid lane, and Fnatic is putting just enough threat to keep it going. But they are falling behind that curve a little bit. You can see the side waves are continually pushing in SKT's favor. Fnatic is getting poked out a little bit too much, especially by that culling from Bang. And that mid turret is getting chipped away at. Yeah, it does not have a lot of health remaining at this point. Only about a third, it looks like. Bang continuing to push that lane. Marin's down in bot two, actually. Maybe going to get a deep ward in here. Just check or... it, checking blue buff right now. Yeah, I guess so. How much pressure they can put on. They're trying to draw people away from mid, so... Oh, there it goes. Mid lane turret down. SK Telecom has killed all three outer turrets now. Now they're picking onto the blue buff. They want to yep. take this next. SKT Rain is in the midst of a power spike. The death cap being completed onto Faker with two major items being completed onto Bang is potentially their strongest point in comparison to Fnatic Team Comp this game. And they need to take as much as possible out of this moment. And we'll see what they can do. Faker moving up through the river. Maybe they can try to catch Huni here. They know he doesn't have the teleport at least. Huni's really hard for Faker to gank though. He has a veil yeah. already. That Banshee's veil is a really smart first buy for Huni. Certainly has done well for him. Meanwhile, Faker will just be happy with a little bit more farm. And so, the game at this point, could we just kind of see it stall out right now until the next dragon? 
It's going to be really hard yeah. for SKT to push through to yeah. get a tier two, so I imagine that is what we're going to see, yeah. Yep. The only way we'd see a fight beforehand, I feel like, is if SKT gets a little bit greedy with their deep ward placements in preparation for the dragon, or if Fnatic walks into a trap while trying to also get the wards for that dragon. Mm -hmm. Well, for now, everybody playing really safe, and we can't blame them. Like, this game is balanced on a knife's edge. This is actually, I think, one of the closest games we've seen yet this tournament. Absolutely. I'd yeah. say it is the closest game yeah. we've seen so far this tournament. Well, look at the gold. It's dead even right now. You know, SKT just ahead by a single turret. Power level's pretty similar on both teams at the moment. And it's the most subdued we've seen Fnatic play. They've been losing their minds in a lot of these games. As soon yeah. as they started falling behind, they go crazy. Uh, this game, they're making more calculated decisions, and honestly, SKT is mostly playing like SKT would. They're not doing silly things, and they're mm -hmm. still trying to play around their win conditions here, which is going to be the Dragons. They had that setback right here, which is what's kept this game close 23 and a half minutes in. You know, even with the scaling that Fnatic has in late game, it's got to be a little bit daunting to know that you're going to have to deal with those SK Telecom teamfight mechanics, but they've held their own so far. I'm trying to set up a pick right now. Yep. Got a pink ward in that river brush. Trying to fanatic, fanatic. <laughs> see if they can get anything. No, they see the ward go down. Just going to sweep it out instead. So may, wait for the next minute and a half. SKT not comfortable pushing up too far at this point. Well, I think he's going to take down the Rift Coward, and he deserves it. In games like this, I always love to track the trinket upgrades. So Fnatic actually has three upgraded yellow trinkets, which means they are spamming things with wards. Mm. But it also gives them a very low amount of pick potential because their vision denial is atrocious right now. Yes, they upgraded four of the trinkets, but it's just one upgraded trinket. Whoa, As they oh, say oh, that, bang, they find it can't help pick. Yep, Hooney trying to make something happen here. Rain over came in. There's a culling to push them away. It looks like SKT will be able to disengage for now, and that all down on Sejuani, will that be something that SKT can maybe take advantage of here? Dragon up in 45 seconds. Wolf's ult down oh, as, as well, though, too. So oh, that's true. pretty important for tanking out and being on the front line. And he heading back into the top side at the moment. Faker going to recall and start to set up. Currently, though, SK Telecom has control over that river. And everyone has been pushed back a little bit here. Waves slowly moving forward in favor of SK Telecom. They're going to have to deal with Marin in the bottom at some point. Yeah, this is... I feel like the Alistair ult versus Sejuani ult and Sivir ult is a worthy trade for SKT in that sense. Oh, yeah. I think another reason Fnatic has gone for the triple sites wards is they know that SKT needs to find the picks. And also, Fnatic doesn't necessarily need a vision advantage in order to find fights. Since they do have Sejuani, Sivir, Nautilus, those are fight starters right there. As soon as you look at someone, you can run straight at them and try and get it. Speaking of fight starters, we may have one here in the next couple seconds. SK Telecom, though, taking that position. Looks like they may just go ahead and grab Dragon. Without Sejuani ult or Sivir this is a dangerous fight. For Yo, people, but they're teleporting in coming out right now. Alistar grabbed Bang. Bang backs into the pit here. They're trying to make something happen. Bangy already taking a lot of damage. Wild Growth use on him. Dragon taken by SK Telecom. Can they get out? Hooney comes in with a big gnarled win. Meanwhile, Marin very low behind the pit. They'll get the kill. Kill on to Bengi, so Fnatic grabs a kill, but SK Telecom getting that crucial third dragon. A little awkward positioning there from Bang, and they yeah. had to use the wild growth onto Nunu, which meant that they couldn't actually defend that adequately. Now, they, they try may that. try for a Baron right oh here. If anything, this is also a Baron oh boy. Now the initiation ultimates are up for Fnatic. They are trying to draw yeah. SKT in, oh yeah. because it would be a thing oh they have boy. to go and stop. Here they come! in trouble! Oh, he manages to get out, only slowed by the ult from Rain over Rain over chasing anyway. Here comes Hooney. Rainover gets so low already though. Faker trapped in the mid lane, has to flash away, whimsing himself as well. Wolf may sacrifice his life for the team. Oh, Febivin goes in, gets the double up, bang, and Faker in trouble. Double kill for Febivin. Marin late to the fight here, and Wolf on his own in the back lines. Febivin with a triple now. Oh, man! A kill for Steelback as well, and Fnatic destroys SKT in that fight. SKT fell for it right there. No Fnatic kidding. pulled the trigger on the Baron bait. The thing is, SKT had to check because Fnatic with the Cassiopeia has the power to burn that Baron down in seconds. That was the play for Fnatic to pull at Beautiful. the end of the Dragon fight. Yeah, Bang did get slowed right there as we see him come in with the culling, but the chase is very good. Of course, that Sivir ult up, really nice setup, and Faker caught out a bit on the front line, and really it was Febebin with this flash into the choke point right here. Beautiful ultimate from Cassiopeia. And then just a 
line damage and the ricochets from Sivir finish that one off. Boomerang Blade for a double. They call Steel back the janitor in the European LCS. He'll lose lane, but he will always pick it up in team fights down the stretch. And this was just a continuation of the long con there for Fnatic. The Dragon fight when SKT overcommitted to take it. They had awkward positioning. They burned so many spells doing that. They sacrificed Bengi for the Dragon, but then the low health bars and the fact that people had to recall set up for that Fnatic Baron perfectly. And now Fnatic needs to press that advantage. Oh, they're certainly Baron trying. Oh, they are. That. Baiting Baron another one up, but the Scrying Orb's gonna spot him this time, yep. Not gonna fall for that two times in a row. SK Telecom may be looking for a fight here, although Marin not around. He does have that teleport. Now Fnatic just turning right onto that Baron. Looks like SKT's gonna spot it. it. Equalizer in the in the Baron pit is and tremendously dangerous. That's right. They're going to come in. There's the Equalizer going down. Splits the team a little bit. Bang still in a little bit of trouble. Zoning out from Bengi. Oh, SKT getting knocked around quite a bit. Bang in the middle of everything. Backs away. Gets killed anyway by Steelback. That's another double kill for him onto Sivir. And SKT, it may already be too late. They can't fight this Fnatic team anymore. Dragon, I mean, Baron did regenerate, and that's going to make it a little bit too dangerous. They may still pay for this one, but no. Looks yeah. like they'll be able to barely make it out. Yeah, even though the Equalizer is down, it's far too dangerous with the Baron Magic Shred to keep on rolling with yeah. the Rumble and the Lulu at full HP in that pit. Now the Eliminated Bang and SK Telecom clumped up in a very preferable way for Fnatic during that team fight. So take a look. Considering this is 15 kills to three, these fights are tremendously close. So at the start of this, Wolf does get some nice pulverized damage right there, and Bang nearly peels himself to safety, but yes, the fact that they landed the Nar stun into the dredge line is what kept Bang a little bit too close for comfort. Yep. They get caught up in the Cassiopeia once again, and that's that area damage, and the team fight scaling we talk about Fnatic having. But still, if Bang is one character model farther back, he might be able to just rip through that fight. It's been like really tiny errors that have led to these uh, team fight losses for SK Telecom, but you know, every fight they lose just gives Fnatic a little bit bigger of a lead. And like we mentioned earlier, with the scaling that Fnatic has going into the late game, you really can't afford to give them any lead. It doesn't or any lead. It doesn't matter who you are. At some point, it's just going to be too much. And I think if you're SKT right now, you're really looking to finally get that QSS onto Bang because that's going to yeah. change a lot about these fights. Because if Bang can stay alive, he certainly has the farm to pull off some pretty major team fight wins right here. And that's what's been slowing him down a little bit. But they probably can't fight again until that item is complete and drag it up in a minute and a half looks like Fnatic will definitely have an advantage on that one and they may just try and trade it for Baron there are a lot of options that they can go for right here so true enough tough for SKT because they have to play both sides of the river at the same time but Fnatic has their choice and Fnatic also has the Sivir ultimate to cover ground in case they're caught between two different decisions and you can obviously see SKT is respecting that team fight power right now they had a ton of wards around that Baron, but the pinks have just been able to be used by Fnatic huh. to clear that out. And yeah, they're yep. going to continue to bait out that Scrying Orb again and again. Now it's all on the Scrying Orb cooldown. There we go. SKT has to move up. They have to move up to clear that. But you can see now the lack of Trinket is preventing Fnatic from having great vision denial. Here they oh, go. Right. Ooh. Didn't really do a whole lot. Ultimate on the bang. There's what the he's there, Megadorn! Oh, nice! Snar ultimate as well. SK Telecom caught yet again. Wild growth. It keeps Bang alive, though. Marin comes in with the kill on the Yellow Star. And Fnatic in a lot of trouble now. Steelback gets roasted. That's a double for Marin. And Bang still up. SK Telecom. They finally save Bang. And look what happens. Marin comes in with a hero play. And Fnatic on the run. Fev in a little bit of trouble. There's the exhaust. Baker wants it. Bang gets it. Meanwhile, Hooney sticking around. Looks like he may be able to make it out. He's trying to defend that tier two, but I don't think you can do that against SK Telecom. Not right now. There it is. So SKT, man, you just can't count these guys out. What a brilliant fight right there from SKT. It was Fnatic pulling the trigger to try and get banged down. But that Nautilus Assault tracked such a long distance that they could not follow enough damage for Bang. And Rain. now the Baron Force GP. reverses. Here oh, comes oh, Hooney. Man. They start the Baron, they turn on to Rain over. Hooney right there as well. He's about to become Meganar. Wolf, very low health. Hooney comes in from behind, getting in position for that old faker. Swing, swing. He's he's it. There it is. Whoa! Rain over steals the Baron. And SK Telecom, what are they going to do? They're going to 
to try to get some kills here. Oh, but look at this. Hooney manages to grab one. SKT in the end as Hooney finally goes down with that whimsy. Wow, Hooney just will not die here. Now Steelback coming. What? Can he do enough damage? Are you serious? There's a kill for Steelback. And Fnatic, they steal the Baron. They get two kills off of it. They trade two of their own, but they lost a insane. Baron with Bengi with Consume and Smite. I can't believe Rain it. Over gets in there and actually pulls it off. Well, Bengi didn't even smite that one. Yeah, and this all started with this fight when they try and jump on Bang. Hootie had the flank for teleport, but honestly, Good the equalizer. equalizer in the middle of the Nuno wall. You could oh, not place oh, it more man. perfectly in there, and a full channel wrecks Fnatic. Trying to dive through all that stuff is difficult for Fnatic, but that isn't even the craziest thing about this game. It's, this is Fnatic making oh, it oh, their oh, style of game. Now, oh, SKT was trying to get some position onto they that. They burned the Sivirol, <laughs> though. Yeah, Sivirol is down. Fnatic trying to get the second dragon. They've got the Baron right now. Double mystery gifting activated, guys. Don't forget. It was a Baron steal. Round 15. Let's go. Uh -oh. Bravo stolen. Baron. Oh, Baron comes in from the back. Gets that. Oh, Fibbon takes him down. Big wild growth on the bang. That was a big knockup. Can bang be the hero again? Hooney just so tanky right now. Yellow star coming from behind. And here comes Steelback. Another big Nar ultimate. And Fnatic as they take down Bang. No, Bang's still alive. But either way, it's another team fight win. That is a perfect day for Fnatic after the dragon steal from Marin. And Fnatic's going to push ahead. This is at least going to be an inhibitor, I would think. Yeah, at the very least going to be an inhibitor. That's probably all yeah, they can get it. right now. Yeah. Point, this is the craziest game we've seen at MSI. Seriously. 22 kills against SKT. The previous was six for the most kills they've given up in a game, and that was against TSM. Right here, Fnatic. <sighs> this is this is well, nuts. They don't get the inhibitor, they get the turret, but just not enough minions having to tank too much turret damage, but still a big win for Fnatic. But even though uh -oh, SKT, uh -oh. oh, did you see the blue buff? Da -da -da. Take it. Oh. And no, no equalizer right there, no backup. But even though we see the, the ace go over to Fnatic, they don't take the inhibitor. Let's take a look at this fight. So, well, Mullen comes in first right, right here. Marin actually manages to take the dragon away, but not the best equalizer, and he does get picked off. Can't quite take out yeah. the Vivin right there. And the fact that Steelback wasn't taken very low right there is a bit of an overcommit. And, like, look how long that Bang actually lasts on the backside of this fight. Wow. Beautiful Marl from Hooney. He is been completely on point this game. And then again, we see Steelback coming in as a bit of the janitor. This time, there was no equalizer to help zone for Bang. So when everyone's chasing after that one threat in a big line, they don't have as much line damage to throw at him. And eventually, they can pick up the most kills. But yes, Monty, wow. we need to take stock of this yeah. game because it it's, has been so crazy. That dragon was actually incredibly important that SK yes. Telecom got it. And it yeah. may, in fact, be worth a getting ace for because if they get number five, it really starts to change. Dragon was on 22 health when Marin hit it with a heart. <laughs> That's how Steel back. Oh, Steel back might be in a little bit of trouble here. Marin He's dead. turning. Yeah, here comes Faker, who's going to get the kill. Faker shut gets down. that shutdown. Faker's starting to get scary, man. He's got Death Cap. He's got the Void Staff. That's a lot of damage now for this Lulu, and they're going to push up to this Tier 2 turret. Yeah, and taking stock of what SK needs, they're still powering up in this sense. A QSS has been completed for Bang. If he finishes his Blade of the Ruin King, he will start being able to cut through Rain over and Huni. And especially with that catch that they've been able to get, how much damage can they actually think about doing to this since they have the Death Cap powered up Lulu? Bang gets shots in on this turret. One thing I want to point out, though, is how fantastic Yellowstar has been at locking down Bang in this game. Yeah. His dredge lines, his ultimates have been on point. Yeah, certainly been some bloodthirsty support. He's 1-2-14. <laughs> That is not bad. I mean, it's crazy that the game feels as close as it does when you look at the kills 9 to 22 right now. But like you mentioned earlier, that fourth dragon that SKT got is huge. It's a farm, too. Yeah. yeah. The farm between Bang and Steelback is immense. Yep. So SKT has been controlling the side waves more in order to get those dragons. But as they're getting the dragons, Fnatic is right on their heels. And that's what's given Fnatic this big kill advantage. If we think about all the fights that have gone Fnatic's way, it was that 
second dragon fight when they got it, then the dragon that transitioned into the Baron, and finally the dragon steal for Marin that transitioned into the ace for Fnatic. Pretty much everything that Fnatic has gotten has been uh -oh. kind of because SKT is committed for those four dragons. Oh, Baker is not here. Fnatic wants this inhibitor, and the wolf is taking a lot of damage. Rain over coming in. Are they going to be able to get the kill? Marin's behind them. Everyone moving in. Yeah, Marin trying to get a bit of a flank, decides against it. They just need to protect that inhibitor, but they can't do it. Or maybe, nope, they can't. SKT turning things around, but Fnatic just waltzes in and takes the first inhibitor to the game. Big mistake by SK Telecom. Fnatic seeing that everyone was split off into the side waves. Yep. And they're able just to push straight down the middle and take the inhibitor. Baron up in a minute and a half. And Dragon up in a minute 45, too. That's a big one. Yeah, and Fnatic has been so opportunistic in this game. Anytime SKT commits for something or commits for some minion kills, they could go elsewhere. Blade the Rule King completed onto Bang now. Faker sitting at four items, but the team fights again and again have gone to Fnatic. Both that Baron, those Baron and Dragons are coming up around the same time. If SKT gets either one of them, they can turn this game around. Fnatic needs to control it, but they do not have control of their minion waves. Hmm. SKT getting some nice deep wards in behind that Baron, just kind of keep an eye on things. Now they're going to move down, see if they can ward up that Dragon as well, too. So the map is being prepared by SK Telecom. They are setting the battleground, you know. Can they win the fight, though? Fnatic still pushing forward. I mean, they're going to have plenty of time to get a hold of the river once again. And they already have deep wards as well, so they're in a perfectly acceptable position at the time being. Assuming we don't see a crazy pick, this fight will all be about how Fnatic can push through the tank line to get to Bang, and whether they get the burst. Oh, hot ran so over. Whoa! The wall, he comes with the flash, and he's going to take a lot of damage. SK Telecom, oh, big ult on the back below. There's the inhibitor. You don't want to go through that. And Huni taking a lot of damage. Dice ult for Marin, actually, to keep Fnatic away. Yelsar bounce back into the team. And now SK Telecom getting two kills. Oh, boy, here we go. SKT chasing Steelback and Femivin. Back through again, fire a uh, snowball, opposite of a fireball, onto Femivin. Bengi gets stunned with that elf, Femivin just trying to disengage. SK Telecom, I feel like they could just turn maybe and try to take Baron. After or those two kills, dragon. after those two kills, they got a lot of presence over here. Yeah. And there was a really weird interaction when Rainover tried to go over that wall. It looked like a bug on stream, but I, they're not pausing though. I'm not sure. It, he could it, report that as a bug, because he looked to be on the other side yeah, of the wall. He bounced oh, oh, oh. back through the wall. That wasn't, he had to burn his flash afterwards. It's SKT Baron right now though, uh, going for the Baron. SK Telecom takes the Baron. Fnatic going for this dragon though. At least they can keep that fifth dragon away from SKT. Marin trying his best though. He stole one. Can he steal another one? No, turning back onto Steelback. Oh, Steelback, meanwhile, just blows up Marin. Fnatic gets that second dragon. And SK Telecom with the Baron. Not sure what Marin was doing there. His team. That was a bit odd. Not anywhere close to being yeah. able to contest that. It's like Faker just going to prep the red buff for Bang right now, who's on his way over. Yep. This game just. Continued in craziness as Sejuani dashed overall, then looked like it glitched back on the other side. But yep. the important thing here is still back critting Marin a couple wow. of times in a row and blowing him up. No they kidding. could then secure the dragon. SKT has the Baron. Well, this is part of the it's peril getting... of going for the death cap build for Marin as well. I mean, Steelback is huge right no now. Zonias. Uh, nine, two, and seven. No Zonias on him yet. And he went for the damage, and in, in a way, he's paying for it. They need a little bit more frontline presence. Yeah, that may have been just a little bit too cocky. Trying to go for that death cap instead of that zone use for the second item. Oh man, that's rough. Fnatic though. Got that dragon. They prevented the fifth. SK Telecom still on the back foot here. You can see they're not really able to use that Baron right now. Well, in that last team fight, you really saw the difference that the Blade of the Ruin King was making too. They were finally able to focus down. Oh, Huni. Culling does a little bit of damage. Not a ton. Oh, yeah. Bang, really going after Fnatic I mean, right now. This is Bang's moment. This is why yep. Lulu can be a good late game champion as well. If you have a capable AD carry who's been able to farm this whole game, which he has, 384 CS, with the item build that he needs, he can cut through Fnatic if they don't quickly get onto him and execute him through thousands of health worth of shields. Plus the Baron buff means Fnatic pretty much has to fight on the next minion wave. Yep. See All right, still split pushing, does have TP available. They want to make a stand, but Fnatic's so tanky that they can body block a lot of this damage and have that presence. SK Telecom moving into the top side of the map. 
See if they can find an angle up there. Big, big minion wave that Marin's built up. Huni is just huge, though, but he's not going to be Meganar anytime soon. Getting closer now. Looks like Fnatic will be able to prevent this. SK Telecom, you get the impression that they may need to win a team fight here to push farther. No, that turret's pretty low. Figure has Lich Bane, so they can split ah, push. Okay. Yeah, and they're going to be running Fnatic back and forth within their own base and shipping down these turrets during the duration of this Baron buff and basically force Fnatic to engage on them through the zoning potential of Alistair, Nunu, and Rumble. Look at the, the chipping they've been able to do to both the mid and the top lane turrets right here. And since there's no flank from Fnatic, it's a very difficult fight for them to do. Huni actually just Whoa. ran out of Meganar. This is SKT's turret to take. That's right, and take it they do. Huni not too helpful at the moment with that Narbar all the way down. Marin grasping a bit. Bang comes in as well. Huni has to retreat. Looks like this inhibitor may go down. So both mid inhibitors now taken out for each team. And SK Telecom just going to back off. Sivir all popped. Are they going to go? Oh, Huni didn't quite get to Bang. Meanwhile, Wolf comes back with a head by Paul Rice. Great equalizer comes down. Rain over. Trying to get the back lines. But Bengi with a big absolute zero. Marin is huge, literally, because that wild growth. Huni manages to catch Faker with his ultimate, but Faker back away. Fnatic in big trouble. Double kill for Bang already. Make it a triple kill. And now, SK Telecom, despite that big out for Femivin. Bang's going in. Oh, Femivin near the That's a penta kill, I believe. Penta yes, it is. For Bang and SK Telecom. Can they end it right now? There's no minion wave. Not for a few seconds, but they've There's got no plenty tanky. of time. Super minions at the base yet. I think they have to hold off. Oh, they've got it's 30 seconds yeah. that time. There's That's so a super time. minion. There it is. First a one. real super minion. A pentakill and a baron steel in the kidding? same game. Are you this kidding me? It's a hell of a game. Well, Fnatic gave SK Telecom a run for their money like nobody else could. But in the end, SKT takes the game. Therefore, oh, GG. What a game! What an ending! You know, Crazy. best game of the midseason invitational thus far. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the more I see this comp from SK Telecom, if you guys missed the SKT versus CJ game four, it was just as much of a thriller. Oh, yeah. I'm still not sold that <laughs> this is a really good composition. It works! <laughs> it's it, an exciting it works. composition. It is the yeah. most exciting composition, but. It, it does have some issues, I think. It certainly does, yeah. but either way, it worked well enough to get SK Telecom the win. Fans on their feet right now after that pentacle from Bang. I mean, so many things to talk about at this game. They were down 10 kills by the end of it, only an 1,100 gold lead when the Nexus fell. The fact that Bang hit those item power spikes as well as Faker being able to shield them, and when Fnatic failed to get the flank in that final team fight after their inhibitor had gone down, that's right in the wheelhouse of the team fight that SKT wants. Oh, yeah. And you give them one of those fights, they win the game. Yeah, the kiting too from Bang in that last fight. And Beautiful. Then, that's one of the things that I 